Okay, I would like to introduce uh, two people to you, two people who I've known who go way back, way, way, way back. Um, they're both affiliated with South Coast Hospital Group, with the RAP program. Are any familiar with the RAP program? I know. No. Yeah, and I always have to look to be sure I get all the R's and the A's. So it's Responsible Action Toward Pregnancy, Parenting, and Prevention. Um, one of the many things that um, Michelle, the little partner, and Cindy Bartlett, one of the many things that they do, one of the many programs that they do, uh, is a 40 Developmental Assets Program. It's all about positive reinforcement, which I think dovetails perfectly with everything that Coach Bill was saying. I asked her if she would come in and give you kind of a condensed version at this point. She is going to be doing the training for um, a, a subcommittee of partners. Well, let me just give you a little background. We'll, we'll do this very informal since it's a small, cozy sure. group. Um, so again, as Masha introduced me, I'm Michelle Gilbo Bartlett. I've worked for the RAP program for several years. Um, I've worked in youth development field for a long time. I worked with the Girl Scouts of um, Eastern Mass for three years as a community programs manager. So I traveled overlooking Girl Scout programs in um, housing developments, um, inner city neighborhoods, places where you wouldn't expect there to be a traditional Girl Scout troop is where I supervised. Um, and then I worked for RAP as a youth coordinator and now my role back is a, an asset educator. Um, so the RAP program, just to give you a little information, is uh, responsible attitudes towards pregnancy, parenting, and prevention. And first and foremost, we deliver a reproductive health curriculum um, in 11 schools in the Greater New Bedford area. And um, we have three different curriculums we use, which is Making Crowd Choices is one of them, and it's very um, urban-based. talks about a lot of preventive measures, condom use, that sort of thing. Um, and then we have RAP, which is the reproductive health curriculum, and then we have RAP 101, which is for middle school. So it's a little bit less involved. It's um, puberty, it's you know, um, self-esteem, that sort of stuff that all comes together. So that's what we start off with first and foremost, is in the schools doing that. And then, as Marsha stated, um, we have a drop-in center in New Bedford where we're just open from 2.30 to 5 every single day. Kids can just kind of come in. We're located across the street from New Bedford Go Tech. I don't know if you guys are kind of familiar with that area at all, um, but we're open. The kids can come in. They can have a snack. We try to give them, you know, healthy options, water, popcorn, granola bars, that sort of thing. Occasionally, we do have cookies and candy mash, I'm sorry. Um, but we do um, offer opportunities for young people to get involved. We offer um, a youth group that we have that meets bi-weekly and they produce um, media that we're using in the schools during our reproductive health classes. They do PSAs, they also do community service, um, we offer teen nights. Pretty much we like to be just a safe space kids can come to, um, and we get anywhere from 15 to 30 youth a day, so it's working. The kids are coming in, they like the staff, they like coming to a place that they feel comfortable. We have Xbox, we have computer stations, we have if you're a teenager and you want to just come sit on our couches and hang out with your friends, that's fine. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Ford Developmental Asset Framework that you see up here. And I thought um, that I would just kind of give you like an introduction. Has anyone heard of this framework before? No? Okay. Oops. I think you guys will agree. We're always looking to fix the problems that exist. Like, this is the teen pregnancy rate. How can we get it down? This is the high school dropout rate. How do we get the kids to stay in school? It's always like, here's the bad, let's fix it. So this youth development framework does the opposite in the way that it kind of flips the way of thinking of, okay, here's a young person, what can we do to embrace them, support them, and then have them become successful adults? Um, so through the framework, it's using positive experience, relationships, opportunities, and personal qualities that young people need to grow up to be healthy, carry, uh, caring, and responsible people. Um, it was created in 1990 and it was research-based. So the Search Institute goes way back to like the 1950s and the story that I heard recently, last year in a training, is that there was a bunch of guys like on a camping trip and they were just talking about like kids and what problem they are and so one of the guys was like, well, you know, what can we do to like stop this? Like we're talking about how bad they are, like what can we do to, to make them be a positive thing. And so that's kind of how the whole institute came about. And um, they started working on the assets and originally there were 30 assets. And then once they started really thinking about what young people need, they developed the list of 40. I'm gonna give you guys that list in a minute. Um, and through their research, they found out that um, people who, the young people who experience more positive encounters and opportunities 
have that successful upbringing and have successful outcomes versus those young people who do not have that. Okay, so um, there are two types of assets. The two types are external and internal. So with external assets, we see um, relationships and opportunity the young people experience in their family, schools, and communities. So I like to think of like the external being like environmental. Let's try to, I try to always relate it to the E because you know you give a lot of trainings and workshops and then you kind of like all of a sudden you start mixing them up in the middle of it, it's embarrassing. So external is environmental. So it's everything that's coming at the young person. And then the internal is the competencies and values that young people develop themselves. So how do they feel about themselves when they're being asked, you know, what is it, how do you feel about this? It's how they interpret it for themselves. And when we work with young people, we all know that that can be a big range of different attitudes and reflections. Even kids coming from the same area, even sometimes the same family. They have a different perspective. We all do in different ways. Okay, so this is where I'm going to pass out your list so you can see what I'm talking about. So as I mentioned before, there are two main components. External, you see the list on the left-hand side is support, empowerment, boundaries and expectations, and constructive use of time. And then the internal assets are commitment to learning, positive values, social competency, and positive identity. So not to like waste too much time, but I kind of thought we'd just at least read right through these so you guys could just see what they're all about. Um, so the external assets, we have support. So as you can see, I'm not going to read the definitions, but 